Right, well, Lynn's here today. Um, Lynn and Brian, husband, uh, we've known each other what, over a year now, isn't it? Um, Lynn's a great friend of mine, probably one of the best friends I've got here. Um, well, no, she is she's very trustworthy, and very loyal, and very nice. And the thing with Lynn is, what I've noticed over this time with her, um, it's rather a sad story in a way, um, but she was messed up in her childhood by a very bad teacher, and it does happen to us. I've had bad teachers in my past, and they damage our confidence, these bad people. So this teacher had told her that she was no good at art when she was a child, and it's affected her for the rest of her life. I mean, it seems ridiculous, but mm -hmm. these things do as a child. They get within us, and we feel lacking. Even if it's just about art, we feel lacking through the whole of our time. It's put us down, and many, many times it's crept into the conversation, especially with me being an artist. Oh, I wish I could do that, Peter. Oh, I do love what you do. I wish I could. I can't. I'm not good enough. I'm terrible. My teacher told me so, so I have to believe my teacher. And I said, no. And this is why I wanted Lynn to share this with you today. She's very kindly consented for the lesson we're going to have today to be filmed so that we can show you, and I guarantee Lynn now that she's going to succeed in this, we're going to have fun. And that's the main thing, we're going to have fun exploring watercolour pastels today. Here's one that Lynn did um, a week or two ago with me, her first ever acrylic, a landscape. I'll show it to you now. So now we're seeing the landscape. And, um, I was so overjoyed myself as a teacher that at the end of doing this painting she stood back and I could see tears in her eyes. And they weren't tears of pain. <laughs> she loved the painting. She had done so well. She had achieved. And the brightness in her step as she was coming down. It was like a little form, you know. She got this painting. Look what I've done. It showed it's possible. And this is what I want to tell you guys. Somebody only last night on uh, YouTube wrote to me and said, Oh, these paintings are so good. I wish I could do. I was no good. I was told it was no good. No. Everybody, all of you can paint. All you need is some good help. I'm not saying you'll all produce what you want to produce straight away. We have to learn to walk before we can run. Um, and you may be an impressionist rather than being a photorealist and so on. It's, it's more complicated. But a good teacher should be to draw out of you the good things that are in your spirit and your soul and what you want to do and help you create. There's no doubt for all of you, everybody can enjoy art in some way or another, abstract or whatever. Everybody can do it. You can all do it. You just need somebody good to help you. That's all I'm saying. And hopefully I'm good enough to help them. Did with the first one, and hopefully we will today. So today then, then well, I've already, um, because time is fairly short, and having one day to do three works, I've got to go away in a few weeks back to England. So I wanted to give Lynn an introduction to these methods and materials, and just give her the confidence that while I'm away, she can now use the acrylics, she can use these mediums, she can have fun on her own, You've got my films on YouTube, all of you, and Lynn. She can go there, she can look at other techniques and experiments and explore. I've got loads of photographs even on my website. You can use free of charge. I've told you this. There's hundreds there for you can choose from and use and share. Uh, enjoy. So here we are. Then we'll set the camera up so we can see what we're going to do straight away. And we're going to have some fun, a day of fun. <laughs> and we stop when you like, Lynn. Have a cup of tea when you like, OK? OK, teach. So we're going to start with this watercolour, Lynn, here. Uh, it's one of the, of the crews, the crows. And uh, I've chosen this one because it's got blocks of colour, not too much white, and a bit of texture of all sorts of texture, little dots of texture, little lines of texture. And we're going to do it as a watercolour, and it looks very complicated with all of this going on. But step by step, with the materials and mediums we're going to use, and the use of different brushes, I'm going to show you different brushes that will give us these effects, even sponges. We can use sea sponge on that, we can use um, rake brushes which are like a comb on this to make the, the textures. Okay. Yeah, all lots of things, fun things, we can just use wet into wet effects to get this. But first, before we go on to another painting, and whilst this dries, I want to show you this stuff, which is masking fluid, Pebillo, I like this particular one. It's a grey masking fluid, not a white one, so we can see it against the paper. Mm -hmm. That's the first point. And the tool we're going to use to put it on is a clay shaper. That's this little fella here. And it's got a rubber point to it. We could use it to sharpen stick or a special brush. Shake it up. It's a liquid rubber solution and it goes on and can be rubbed off when it's dry. So we let it dry and then we paint over it and it will leave the white paper behind like a stencil in a way. Yeah. Um, and then when the whole painting's done we can rub it away and these light areas will come out again mm. sharp edged. Mm. So it's great for little dots of things like this look. So I want you in a minute to paint in with this masking fluid all these little bits and pieces of light, any bits of light you see like that. Okay. We'll put this up here, just out of the way, and then when that's drying we're going to move across to a pastel. So the first thing to do is open the lid, otherwise you can't get into it. That's it, I can get into this, that's it, because I've been used for a while. There we go, Cabillo masking fluid, a blue-grey one, and 
which you're going to do is stick the right end in, as I wasn't about to do then. Um, don't have, you know, you've got a fair amount on. And here's our light area I've drawn here. Look, this, this is that area there with all the little bits of light. You just go in there and just dot this in like this, yeah? And the bigger bits here of the stones, you see I'm using the flat of the blade now. Yes. And down here, on the, use the edge of the, the, the dotty blade to put these little bits of white flecks, these little bits here, look, yeah? yeah. So if you could do all of that for me. And, and the clouds and No, 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 just, just no, the clouds are going to do with, with the wet. All I want is stones. these little bits here and round, and these, these, these stones here, right up through here, little bits of light like this, and these little bits of white fleck, okay? okay. All I want you to do. That's good. There they go. Immediately she's, she's well in the, You see, basically if, a, if, a, if a, a student has hand to eye coordination and they're not totally deaf, I haven't tried to teach a deaf person yet, but I'm sure I could do by, by uh, writing things. Um, they can, if they can listen to what I'm doing and follow what I'm doing, they can, they can create art. It's not a big problem. Watch the angles now, make sure your angles, I mean, for instance, here we've got almost horizontals going across and already you slope that that's it that's the way yeah, be okay. aware of the angle straight away yeah. so i'm going to pick up on things as we go along little things that might become mistakes later i don't do criticisms when i go to do a crit at an art society i do positive assessments i look at what somebody can do well at the beginning of a painting i look at all the good points however poor they might be i look at all of the good points pick those out and then at the end i might say but in my opinion we could improve this by uh, and that is just my opinion. So with all the little bits of dots and blots and dots and dashes, that's so I get the textures nicely. Okay, if you don't smudge your hand on it, that's another mistake one can either make because you've got to put down here, remember? Okay. Yeah. So you might have to just keep your hand off a little bit. Fine. Okay, we'll stop the camera there for a moment while yeah. you catch well, up with it. One of the ways we can use to put white with watercolour, leave the white paper. Otherwise, you would have to paint white over the top. So we'd have to use either pastel or white, uh, an opaque white paint to put white over the top. Anyway. And we're going to do that tree as well, look. That's going to be using the edge of the blade. It takes a bit of doing, but it's all brush control and tool control. Right, so Lynn's done the masking fluid now. And if we just bring this down, I can show you what she's done. These areas of light on the tree, on the rocks coming through here, the little sparkles of light here. And the masking fluid is dried already. And as Lynn has seen, it wasn't that difficult to do, and it's gone darker okay already here. Watch masking fluid in the sunshine don't get this in high heat or sunshine because it melts into the paper and you can't get the damn stuff off. So be careful about heat sources and things. I painted in Egypt with it once and it just wouldn't come off at all. It just went slime. The Bibiu isn't so bad, but Windsor and Newton and some of the others are really bad for heat. So we're going to leave that to dry, totally dry off and we're moving over to our pastel painting whilst that dries. This will just rub off as you see. Because Lynn got some in the wrong place and when it was dry just rubbed it off and wow, it, see how it works. Right Lynn, we're going on to the pastels now and the paper you're going to work on is Ongres paper, as in the artist Ongres, and there are two sides of this paper. The other side has more of a green, almost like a canvas. Don't use that side. People think that's the side to use because they think it's like a canvas. Use the smooth side. What we call the bite, the surface of the paper, is the same the other side as this side, but the other side is more textural and it becomes a nuisance unless you want that texture. It's like an orange peel, but it fights us. So we use the smooth side of the paper, not the rough side. We've got our Unison pastels here. Look, the beautiful new dark set. Recommend this to anybody. Unisons have just brought out, I love Unisons, the best pastels in the world. They've just brought out this set of darks. So we've got those we can use. These are the cheaper pastels. We can get inscribes in these. We cannot get these wonderful bright fluorescent colours in the cheap, in the expensive pastels. So we might need some of these at times, but they won't do the same jobs as well as the unisons do, the softer pastels do, because they're harder. They've got more chalk in them. And what I'm going to do is now just say, touch that pastel there with your finger. Yeah, not much on it, is there? Now touch one of these. And the difference. Wow. So these will mix with water more easily as well, and they go on easier, and they're much creamier, but they're much more expensive. So they're far better pastel. And then, your sweetie box. Look at this. Now they're a bit mucky. If you want to clean your pastels, you can put them into a jar of tapioca or ground rice or rice, and shake them up, and they all get cleaned up. So there's one way to clean pastels. 
Um, don't throw away your old bits of pastel, these are getting very small, when you've got little bits or chunks anywhere, save them all up in a jar, grind them all up into a powder, mix with a little bit of water into a paste, new pastel with that colour, a grey. So we know nothing gets wasted. This is basically pigment bound together with gum arabic, just like watercolour. Watercolour is the same but finer pigment, this is slightly coarser pigment, gum arabic, and it holds them together. Therefore, like watercolour, if we wet them, they're going to go like paint. But we're not using that today, we're going to use the old English technique of blocking and blending. We're going to work from our mid-tones through to our darks, blending in and blocking, blocking in colours of these and blending them together, and then we're going to go to our lighter colours afterwards and bring all the lights out. So we can work lights over dark, darks over light. And if we rub that well into the surface, we can, it'll kill it, we can um, put in the lighter colours at the end. So mid-tones and darks, light colours at the end, Pastel works by the little particles reflecting light, so if we smudge it, it kills it, it goes dead. So our last coats must be left alone, not even fixative if we can help it, fixative kills them too. If we put a double mount on this, shake it all off first, it won't touch the glass, leave it as it is, it's nice and sparkly, it's nice and fresh. If anything touches it, or even the spray on it, it will make it go duller, so nice and fresh. I'm going to come around there now and I'll show you how to make a start on this. I want you to look through the photograph like it's a, a veil of gauze. I want you to look through it to these mid-tones at first. So not these lighter colours, what's underneath them, this sort of browny grey here, um, the, 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 the mid-deeper greens. And then we're going to put the lighter greens on afterwards, OK? And even, even in the water here, we're going to be working down a mid-grey blue, and these lighter blues are going to come on afterwards. A darker brown here, putting the lighter grey colours on afterwards. The deeper greens here, and then putting these lighter colours on afterwards. I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's start with the sky. This lovely turquoise, and one of the beauties of Unison's, they have a wonderful range of Caribbean turquoises, I call them. So you can see the whole thing going. I'm not going to zoom right in on the paper. I'm just going to go in a little bit. Let's look first for a lovely light turquoise. If we look at our photograph and we look at that, that's not far off down here, is it? And we can block and blend. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to bother with the clouds, I'm going to leave the clouds for the moment. That blue comes through here, up into here. Now look at the texture of the paper if I use it lightly. But I want to lose that texture of the paper, so I'm going to blend it in. I've blocked, and now I'm blending, yeah? Right up around the buildings here, you can see what I've done the buildings, we've got to work into them. Look how hard I can push, and then blend in, and push quite hard, right through into these trees and things. Now, when it comes to this tree here, you see the light comes through the dark. Don't worry about that. But it's going to do that tree as one dark block and put the lights in afterwards. So here, I'm coming right up, blocking and blending, and I'm going to put a deep blue over this in a minute. I just want to block this in. So I want you to find all of these areas where the turquoise is, right through, there's a fly running on there, it's nicked off. Go away, right through here at first, and just block and blend in, okay? Fingertips only. So block it in and blend it in. The rest, fine. That's blocking and blending. Anywhere else you might see it now, we've got to come right through here to blend that through there. Use your fingers on that. Use your finger different directions. I say, you see this cloud comes like this, doesn't it? It's almost in perspective. So we can use our fingers to blend, and already we get, look, a feeling of perspective there. Just by blending in that direction. It's not just across. Yeah. We can feel how that directional work goes. Yeah? Mm. That's great. Anywhere else you want it? That's about mm. it there, isn't it? Okay, okay, let's leave that then. Now let's choose a slightly warmer blue. Just slightly, so we'll put that one back in, otherwise you get them lost. And they are, they're not cheap, these pastels, they're a couple of quid a piece, so this one is a very dark um, blue. We want a touch of this to get this colour working, so if I just gently touch that on top and just blend that lightly, look at that lovely blue we get, not too much, just touching it in. Yep, try that. A little touch on the side, just to flatten the pastel. You notice that there's no papers on these pastels, I take them off, because we can't use the pastel. Now you see you've got one sort of blobby lump there, so yeah. what we've got to do now, we can work them backwards and forwards, is use the pastel just gently, just to scumble, don't push too hard in one area, and then blend it so we get a, a genuine graduation of colour there, like that. So that's just a little bit down here, I'm going to move on quite quickly, and mm -hmm. um, that's it, that's just got the feeling of that change of colour there, and that's all we need for that, it wasn't that simple, I mean, you know, it's there, don't overwork it. That's nice and fresh. We can always come back and make that a bit fresher at the end. This is the blocking bit. Now we need a mid-grey for those clouds. A nice soft mid-grey. Let's just look at that one. That's not far out, is it? 
So it's quite a light grey, that one, actually. Let's start off with that one, just at the beginning. So we'll, we'll use this as our mid-tone. Uh, maybe I'll go a bit darker than that, actually. I think a little bit darker than that would be good. There we are, that's a better colour. So I want you to do the whole of these clouds everywhere now. Um, right down through here, right through here, right up through the... Don't worry about the tree too much. Right, right through the tree here, the whole of the, the whole of this area is going to now be this, this grey, right down to here, okay? And block that in and blend it in. Use your fingers, that's to get used to it, so you know how much you need. First use of pastels, the old English block and blending method on pastel paper. Now look, we've got a lovely cloud already, look at that! I mean, you know, it's, it's happening already. It's incredibly easy when you've got the right techniques and get, choose the right colours. Remember what I said on the acrylics? Put the right colours in the right shapes, in the right places, relevant one to another, in any painting, of this figurative painting like this, and it works. That's great, isn't it? Yeah? Got it? Right, that's it. Go back, no, stop now, yep. Yeah. Right, put that one back. And we're going to immediately now start making some of the lighter parts for the cloud. Now, it isn't just white, it's a very light cream. So let's see if we can find a, a lighter cream that will do this. We'll test it on here first. That's almost there. And again, very lightly, we're going to use the white, the, the cream and then the white. I want you to make cloud marks. So we're going to start off with this, just the tip of the pastel, at the edge of the tip of the pastel, making these little cloud fluffy marks look like this. Just where the lights are, that's it. You notice here it's a bit creamer, isn't it? So we're going to put a bit, sorry, a bit pinker. No, a bit pinker, a bit, a bit pinker there, minute. Just the edge of the pastel, don't make them too much of a line, trying to use the edge of the top of the pastel more, and then if it's too liney, use your finger just to blend them a bit. We want these to be fluffy edge, so try and use the edge of the pastel a bit more, not so much the tip, lower down. A bit more here, a bit round. This is important, this light against dark here. That's it, good. Okay, stop. Can I use a white? That's all white. So wherever the light of it is, I want you to smudge. You've got to start watching your hand, you've got to keep the hand off the paper. That's the way. Wherever you see it, it comes right up through behind those trees. It even comes into the blue here a bit. That's lovely then. That's it. Right through. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right through the, through the blue slightly there. That's it. Let it come into the blue. Yeah, come across. There you go. So one hour so far. And we've got the nasty fluid on. And we're a third of the way through this pastel. So we're not doing badly. Wherever it is, that's it. Blub it. Make sure that you don't have too much pastel on. So really rub this one in well. Make sure that these, you know, that you're using it all up. That's it. Get rid of that brown paper and really rub it all in the world. Next, let's have the mid-tone for the water. Put that one back again, somewhere over here. If I can find where it came from. Right. Um, that's, well, that's fine. No, that's a bl blend it in. Yeah, all of this lot wants, you know, blend it. Just blend it right into the brown. Don't worry about it coming across slightly. Just. You know, just to soften these edges, blend it all in. There we go, block and blend. That's the way. Right down to the bottom there, stop. Fine, don't overdo it, that's just great. Now we come back to that vile pink we had and put a little bit of that in across here as well. Where you, where you can see it down around these edges, looking here. That's the way, it's so easy. Right colours, right places, right shapes, and wow! Suddenly, your trees are appearing in between, it's great. Same on the right hand side and bring it through these branches a little bit, but make sure you're carrying these branches, the shapes, the direction they're going, or there. Right, um, before I go on to doing these other mid-tones, I want to get some darks in now, to actually start some darks. And we've got these lovely dark colours here if we want to, but let's just see what we've got in our, in our own range first of all. This is a very dark green. Is it dark enough? Yes, that's quite a deep enough green. We don't want to be too black with it. So I want you to have several films to do this, I think, because we're not going to manage all of this into one film for the viewers. That's it, wherever you see those darks, that's just great. Just like that, we're going to bring these branches out, making marks about the marks that are there. Dark into here, now I'm using the side of the pastel more here, as it comes dark around here. I'm using the tip of the pastel for the branches there. You need to explode that tree outwards into those bushy, leafy marks as they come. That's better, yeah. And I want you to come across here now, and do the same here. To start you off, we've got a blocked area here, look. Yeah? And then it explodes outwards, pressing quite hard with the pastel. It comes right up to here. And much of it is built with these little marks, one over the other. And they're never the same. I'm, I'm, I'm changing my marks into different directions here. We've done our cooler darks. I think cool man. Now we're going to go warmer. 
we haven't even needed to use my view set, but if you look here, look at how those are cool. These are more purple, aren't they? These are darker and warmer. Look how black that is compared to that. It's a greyer black. We're going to now come into much darker colours. This is a much warmer, this is, this is a, a black. Um, we're going to just come into, it's very sooty black, it's almost too black. But we're going to come into these areas now. That shape. Shape's already there for you, that's it. No, 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 it's where, it's where the dark is, there. It's, it's, it's already there, that's it, that one. Fill that in. That's it. So now we're going to start on our lights. But we're going to work from our darkest lights, if you're with me on there, to our lightest lights. So if we look at this colour as being um, maybe a middle tone, it's a slightly browny colour. Again, very gently, just over the top. Look, this is, this is a, a mid-tone. And even, even a little bit with the side, that's just blending back a bit, even the side of the pastel, so even down that dark there, just a little bit, just blending in here, these warmths. It even comes a little bit of colour. Just going to use the pastel just to link it together, look, just a little bit here and there, here and they're done, right. So anywhere where the marks are now, that's it. Just hinting in places, just lightly in places and stronger in others. That's up in the sky, be careful. Yeah, that's it, yeah, little bits, yeah. You've got it, that's the way. Don't rest your hand on the pastel. If you do want to do that, have a bit of tissue paper underneath your hand. Yeah. You see, that's because your painting's coming yeah. off on your hand. So if you do need to rest your hand, put a bit of tissue paper there on a newspaper there. And just slightly more orange, yellow, watch your marks there. Again, watch those marks. Um, okay, now we're on to our final stages, and it's actually looking very nice. We've got to start getting in these greens. So we're going to take two greens here, one deeper one, mid-tone green, leave it alone, not red, go off, go off. <laughs> and one light, lighter one here. Now we start with this one, and only using the side of it, just find these little bits of lighter, you're painting with light, you're painting these cooler greens. This is these ones here, look, just the edge of the pastel, just gently, here ever so lightly, look, Use the side of the pastel to actually draw a hint in, hint at these edges of these leaves. You're hinting at the edges of the umbrellas or bunches of leaves. That's it. So it's not much, is it? There's a little bit here and there, but most of it is, is up and around and these tips of these trees and around down through here and yeah. that middle bit. This is very important, this bit that comes down through here. So make sure you go low enough, not at the top of the hill this time. And we're coming to our finishing stages now. We're going to come back to this tree here and put these lights, as I was saying, back in, over the top, look. You can actually yes. put those lights in now. Wonderful. And stand back. And does it need anything else? A little bit of warmth mm. here and there. It needs a little bit more very light orange if we can. Now, have we got that colour in our um, repertoire? And these colours. A, bit of, a little bit of this orange. And of course, hold that little bit. This is a harder pastel. You're going to find it much harder to make the mark. But if we use a bit of this orange down here, just a little bit of feathering there to bring it back again, and that light comes down. We've lost the, the lights. We've lost the, the lights a bit down here. I want to just bring these back. Okay, let's stop at that. And let's have a look at our picture from a distance because I think we're about done. We've realised there's quite a bit more pink in this one. We're just going to do a bit more work on this one before we think it's finished. We're getting there now on this picture. I know, they're both pretty damn good.